Next, let's clear this off. All right, one, two, three. All right, our final review. I'm going to walk through the homework. Look at that. All right, CS Core Concepts Review. Let's just look at the instructions and read them out. The questions on this assignment will refer to the following code, either by line number or section A, B, and C. The code has been tested in Python 3.8 and runs without errors. So the point there is um, there's no trick questions about is whether or not something's a, just a syntax error. So let's look at, uh, so okay, A, B, and C. These are the sections as listed, A, B, and C. Again, any test, you just want to familiarize yourself really quick with the code. What's, what stands out obvious? And so let's see, even before we're asked questions, we got eight lines here. Uh, they're all assignments. They're all equals. And when this code runs, it's just going to run start to finish, top to bottom. There's no reason it's ever going to stop uh, unless something was illegal, but instead it's all legal code. Second section here, B. Okay, uh, I'm not going to stop to figure out what it's doing, but I just I do see that there's an if, an elif, and an else. There's an if and an else. There's a while loop, and uh, oh yeah, I can see there's a for loop in here. No surprise. These are all the control flow structures in Python, and that makes sense to have on a kind of a the end of semester review see some print statements, several print statements. So I would know when the code executed, there'd be things printed out. All right, that's uh, section B, right there, B. All right, and the last one, um, you know, you're always trying to get inside the, the teacher's mind, inside the whoever wrote the test. And if you can identify what a section's about, you probably know what it's not about. But that'll come down when we get the questions. We won't want to overthink it when we're at this point. So um, a function, let's see, def, that was how Python defines function. So that's def, is ready to boil, okay. And there's a parameter, I'm writing over the code. Let's see, there's a comment, and there's a return statement. And then there's a print, a call to the function. 98.6, sounds like temperature stuff. All right, so that's just a quick scan. I see something that's got a simple function definition, um, just some control flow and some variables. Let's see. Here's a sort of a caption, I guess. Three core concepts to programming. And that is what I'd want you to really take away from this end of semester review. Um, independent of Python, independent of anything else we've learned, these core pieces are really what everything is built upon. So one, values of different types stored in variables. Mm -hmm. Logic that controls the flow, what gets executed next, what's ignored, and then uh, function, function definitions and invocations. So that's how things are composed. So we called a lot of built-in functions. We called print right off the beginning. We called uh, rand, random function generators to generate random numbers. We did sine and cosine. Those were built-in functions. Um, I'm not sure if we did any stuff with date. We called functions for moving turtles around. And then you built functions that pack that stuff around. So when we did the Sierpinski triangle, we used the functions that move the turtle, turtle to draw it around, set the line color, and then we put that in a function so that when we called it, it drawed the triangle. But in some cases, it draw the triangle by turning around and calling itself to draw the function again. Anyhow overthinking it right now as far as test goes so let's see which section of code best is the best example of variables variables being defined whenever you see tests you know you can talk yourself into all sorts of different answers but you definitely got to get a sense of what's the best example um, and if, it's, if the best example is 10 to 1 better than the others, don't try to make the case that the other one could be. Because could be doesn't mean it's the best. So let's look. What's the question here? Best examples of variables being defined with values of different types. So we'll go back and look at the code here. All right. Um, well, let's see. Message in the beginning was the word. That's, that's a string. So that's a string. This is a count equals 5. But with no decimal point, that's an integer. 
body temperature, that's a real number like you use in science class, a measurement, 98.6 degrees. Uh, these are other numbers. Vector, we did a video on it, talked a little bit about This is complex number, so that's a different. Boolean, sure seems like these are the variables of different types. Down in here, just to glance through, I'm being thorough. If I was doing this as a test, which this wasn't, this is was just homework. Um, I don't see a lot of assignments going on in here. There is this one. There's I equals 1, I equals I plus 1. So not nearly as many. And really no functions, no variables being defined at all in, the, in this last one. So not that. All right. So with that, I'd go ahead and say section A. Check. All right. It's interesting. This orange background checks things with red. That sounds kind of, that could be confusing. Which section of code is the best example of control flow, such as if, elif, el, else. Now, in JavaScript, you'd probably say if, else, or if, then, else. Um, but Python does use the word elif for else if, so we wanted to put that in there. Uh, for and while statements. Well, there's only one that has if, elif, else, and for and while, so that would be B. All right, which section of code illustrates defining a function and then using it? Well, there's only one function defined. That's right here. So this would be C. All right, let's go to C. So those are the foundational elements. Functional composition, that's how you build bigger programs out of smaller ones. Control flow, so how you, you know, how you decide to do something sometimes and do other things other times. And last one, everything's going to be stored in variables. All values have to have a name. All right. Now we're digging into, oh, look at here, look at that. Variable expression from section A. Well, whoever wrote this test was trying to be kind of nice. So, message. Message was, and this one, you know, you have to scroll back. Message, in the beginning was the word, okay. Match the variable expression from section A. So that was, it's not true or false, it's a string, all right? Count, count was, let's look at here, count was five. Okay, so that'll be integer. Now this is a, this is the one here, but you know there could be confusion over this. But since there's no decimal number after it, it's kind of like if you have a box of eggs. You know, I can have one egg, two egg, three eggs, but I don't want to get something that has two point five eggs. And that's the key difference. If you're in math, you'd probably talk about instead of saying the word integer, you're more likely to use something like a, a whole or a natural number. Body temperature, referred to that a little bit. That was one like a science number, a real number, real, um, so that comes from the element of Rene Descartes, uh, real numbers. He also came up with the idea of, vec of complex numbers. That vector, which was, I think, four plus three J, is an example of a complex number. Semester done, oh yes, this is what you're looking for here. Semester done was defined as, right here, True, you were close enough when you took the test, so that's what it was. That's a Boolean. So let's go ahead and semester done is Boolean. My books. So you're going to have to turn in books, I know that. So my books is, uh, let's see, so this is a list. I can see the square brackets. Uh, if I was in Python, if it was a parentheses, that would be a tuple. Square brackets is list. I can type that out there, list, and parentheses would be T-U-P, there we go, ah, try to type that there, okay. So, my books is a list. Now, the last few here, note the question was a variable expression, keyword here, expression, not just variable. So. My book sub zero means index my books and what do you get out of my books? What was the first element in that list? And it was the book English or the string English. So the answer to that one is string. String. Count less than 10. So count is a, an integer, 10 is an integer, but because we have the greater than, the less than, now it's an expression and it's a Boolean expression. So it's gonna be true or false. Is the count less than or not? It doesn't matter if it's true or false. 
It's just that it's a Boolean expression. And then abs, we use that function a few times. It's like sine or cosine. And it's going to return a number. This is one that's probably the most, the most advanced one in here, that abs can take an integer and return an integer. It can take a real number, like 5 or minus 5, and return 5. And so it will return a real number. Uh, if you pass it a complex number, it's actually the magnitude, which is the length. And so for 3 plus 4j, that would be the hypotenuse of that, and that would be 5. But you don't need to know the answer. It's simple as the real. So that was probably, that was something that showed up in some of our homework assignments, so it's not new, but that's probably the most esoteric question on here. Length. Message. Well, if message was a string, length is always the size of that collection. So if length on the list of books, it would be like four or five, how big that list was. Len for a string is how many characters are in it. So it's, and that's it's like that box of eggs. You know, you can have two characters, five characters, 15 characters. You're never going to have two and a half characters. So that's going to be an integer. All right, we did that one. For what value of semester done will in will line 11 in section B, I'm so confused, be executed? And there's four answers. Let's see, when this is true, when it's false, or never or always. Well, let's go look at that question. Line 11. So line 11 is right here. Here we go. It says, if semester is done, looking at right there, and not semester done. Well, this is uh, if A and not A, which is kind of like if the glass is empty and the glass is full, do this. I'm not talking about half full, half empty. It's like when it's, when it's empty and when it's full, or if it's empty and it's full. And that falls into the law of non-contradiction. And maybe this is just a, an, an honoring reference to Ravi Zacharias. He, he certainly pointed out to a lot of people's reasoning that honestly a lot of philosophy will get down to the point of them trying to believe in God and not God. And the, the law of non-contradiction shows up. You didn't need to know what the answer or what non, law of non-contradiction was here. It's, yes, that was just, it was a little bit of a hint to that. And it written out there. But this logic, uh, that line will never execute because it can never, A can never be true and false at the same time uh, in the general case. We're not talking hardware or interrupt low level programming in C. This is Python. So that could never happen. And sometimes compilers will actually warn you and say that this code was dead code, that it can't execute. But the way we've been running it, we wouldn't have gotten any warnings. It just never would have done it. So, all right. So it is from uh, a form of A and not A. For the statement in line 19, I count therefore what values of I will be printed. All right, this is an important one, guys. If we're printing in here for I in range count. Important point here is in computer science, many times, many, many times, a majority of the times, when you're dealing with an index that's going to some number, you're almost always starting at zero. And it's always the case for the case of range. I'm just saying you need to think of the first element in a sequence usually being zero. And that's not the way you think about it in English. In fact, we say the word first, we associate the number one with that. Um, so this is, you're gonna see this in JavaScript, you're gonna see it in Python, you're gonna see it in C, you'll see it in Java. So, if semester done, and uh, that was true, but for I in range, I, so the first value that's going to come back from range will be zero. And it will have five elements. So, zero, one, two, three, four. So, that would be this guy. Line 26 in section B flips the sign of a variable I by multiplying it by negative one. When the code is run, how many times will the while loop flip the value and print looping. So we are in line 26. What's that line 26? There we go, right here. I equals I times negative one. Now it starts off with I is equal to one. 
So we we'll just walk, this is an example, just walk through the code. So you write that, you basically just on, draw a sheet of paper or right next to it if you, if you can draw on your test. Say, we'll just say I, make a little chart. So this is a way to do it here. Make a little chart and put I, there we go. And then the, then the loop iteration count. So it's gonna go uh, loop two, three, four. And I'll put like a little hashtag here for count the number. Okay. So the first time we get into the loop, it's gonna be that initial one. But then we're gonna multiply it by negative one. So the next time it will be negative one. And then we're gonna multiply negative one times negative one. And so that should give us one. And then with negative one. And so it's like, hmm, patterns beginning to develop here. It's just gonna flip back and forth. It's kind of like that blinking piece of life in Conway's Game of Life. So it's never, let's see, I less than 10, it's never gonna get greater than 10. So it looks like this is gonna run forever. So let's look at that code here. Look at the question. Ah, yes, 10 times because there's a 10 in a while loop. Well, this is. This is that red herring question. It, already, it has some piece of truth, because there is, because there is a 10 in the while loop. But this question here, mm-mm. Till power is unplugged, this is an infinite loop. Yeah, this is, an, this is a word you should always recognize, infinite loop. And that means something that has no point when it was gonna stop. So how many times will it print so, till the power? That looks like the good answer, never. Well, we definitely saw that it was going to print a few times, so this would be the right answer. All right, almost done. Line 33 in section C does not look like regular Python. Will it cause an execution error? Now remember at the very beginning, we said, has been tested in Python 3.8 and runs without errors. Hmm, hint, 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 hint. Look at that. Well. You don't have to trust that or remember that. This is hashtag does not account for air pressure, but is a start. Okay, there's kind of this. And so let's see, what if I put in here, I'm gonna put in, let's see if I just search for this. I'm gonna put this in the window so you can see what I'm typing here. Python, remember you can do this for homework. Oh, okay, look, meaning, what is that? So. For all of the homeworks, you clearly said you could go do anything you want to, open book. Ah, expressions. Hmm. You know, it's interesting, Python probably has trouble. What if I put this in quotes? Because it's not one of the things you search. Oh, that's not, that's not gonna help. Oh wait, hold on, the meaning of, oh, that's interesting. Hmm. I'm gonna start in here, hashtag bang, bang, bang. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, here, look. Hashtag followed by anything is a comment. So far as Python itself is concerned, it, that's all it is. Yeah, this kind of, this answer here is a little bit off on the side, but that was the point, the hashtag. So, whoop, Python comment. Comments in Python begin with a hash mark white space character and continue to the end of line. That is right. Let's go back to the question on here. So look at that a little closer. It does not look like regular Python. Hashtags must be followed by legal Twitter symbols. Well, it has the word legal, so, but, but this is a red herring. So no, no, it's this guy. All right. And what bug might be lurking in the function is ready to boil. So I put the bug and true, there's a the thing, there's a pass a string. Well, if you pass the string, this, yeah, it could be really weird, but we're not passing a string, we're passing a number. So, but let's see, temperature F, we're passing in fair, you know, I don't know that I don't know the context of these, but 98.6 sounds like a body temperature. And it says water temperature, F, does that F mean Fahrenheit? Well, if you're familiar with the language, you might realize that, but it says it returns water temp 
Fahrenheit greater than water boil C. Now, there's nothing that's explicit here, but you know, you could guess at this thing going, I wonder, you know, basically you should always have your, your curiosity antenna up when you see something working with scientific units and look to see if the units are being consistent. So can't say for sure if this was, you know, a bug or if you don't have the context, but let's look at the question and answer here. So you could pass a string. Looks like Fahrenheit and Celsius are being mixed. That's definitely true. Uh, it might return the wrong answer if intended for high altitudes or outer space. Yeah, there was that comment because water boils at different temperatures based on the altitude. If you know your science, you know that. But um, so, you know, actually, I went ahead and made all three legal answers. Originally, I just had these two. Um, this one and this one, but I've gone ahead and marked this one as a valid answer too, um, because Python is a dynamically typed language. And so if you were to pass a string, Python wouldn't complain at all until you ran the code, in which case then it would be trying to compare the string to the number, and then it might gripe about that. Um, so there definitely are cases where you wouldn't know until you ran, and so that's kind of the definition of a lurking bug, as in one that you can't tell at compile time. If it's something you can tell the moment you launch the code or the moment you compile the code, um, then that wouldn't be lurking. So let's see. Next, uh, what part did you, oh yes, and here, what part did you enjoy the most? If you answered those, that is great. If you didn't, you can retake the test and put these in or just email me um, straight up. I really value the feedback. Uh, this has been an awesome class, guys. So let's submit the test. So we got on here. View our score, and we got 100 out of 100. So there you go. That's a complete walkthrough of our last homework. I want to bless, I want to wish you a wonderful summer and look forward to seeing you guys next fall in my class or are just on campus. Take care. Bye.